Hi, this is Ed back again with another supporter video here for everyone on Patreon, Steam it and Subscribestar. Thank you so much for supporting my work. Uh, as we go into an interesting document called the Je uh, Jeffy Memo, uh, which is quite interesting. I mean, you might have come across it before, but a lot of people haven't. So I'm going to go into it in this video. You've heard everyone go on about how Rockefeller was for population control. Well, here is really the reason why a lot of people go on about that. This memo is very famous. So let's just really get right into it. I hope you enjoy this kind of throwback to some of conspiracy history. Now, this particular memo here is in higher resolution. Uh, this is a reconstituted uh, version of a 1969 document, okay, which we will be going into. Now, don't worry about staying too long on here. I'm going to go onto this memo, uh, this particular screenshot in detail. I just want to reiterate some points before we get into that. First off, this is about population control. This is what this memo is about directly as via its headline, decreasing US fertility rates. Now that came out in 1969. We are now, of course, in 2019 and US fertility rates are at an all time low. That's not just the US, that is the West in general. And I've gone on about that quite a bit. As you probably note by all my videos, maybe a dozen or so on the dropping male fertility rates. There was a period there uh, on my channel where I was doing one of those every day. So this is called the Jaffe Memo. Okay, and it's very famous here. It's even cited on Wikipedia. A link to the full memo in its original form from 1969 will be posted in the description so you can read it at your own time. There's a lot of information in it. It's written by Frederick S. Jaffe. Now, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He was the Vice President of Planned Parenthood, uh, or Planned Parenthood Federation of America, and the founder of a famous institute there. He's also won numerous accolades, or had won numerous awards, and had a number of accolades, and was elected to the Institute of Medicine, the National Academy of Sciences, that was one year before his death there in 1978. Here's just for reference, Scientific American, writing for Scientific American there in an article from 1973 on what? Population, fertility control. That was his main bend. Here is the particular document we're going to be citing there from March the 11th, 1969, Center for Family Planning Program Development. Now just some proviance about this document. It's a famous document, okay? It has led to uh, a number of researchers, and me included, you know, completely in line with the belief that the Rockefellers were trying to control population. And of course, that's a long standing conspiracy in the canonical works of conspiracy law, so to speak. This is the reason, one, one of the reasons why is this particular document. It's cited numerous times here, you can see in Science Hub from 1970, another article citing that particular document, and so on and so forth. Here is the original screen cap of the table which we're going to be going into. Now I've got a higher resolution view of that, so don't worry about it. Uh, as we went on about before, the reconstituted version of the document retyped out. What I want to emphasize before I go on is this is a document for the people at the heights of power. This document was used in order to institute policy. This document is associated with the, the Rockefeller network. Indeed, this person is cited as directly connected to David Rockefeller. The, the types of people that this document is for, this memorandum, is actually to institute policy, and we'll cite that specific reference a bit later. But let's have a look at the document itself. Okay, so this is a memorandum to Bernard Burleson, President of the Population Council, found in the activities relevant to the study of population policy for the US. We've gone on about the date. It is by Frederick James Jaffe, President of Planned Parenthood World Population. The table at the top reads examples. Okay, this is specifically important to remember what this table is about. It's part of a larger document. But here we're, here's the name of the table, examples of proposed measures to reduce U.S. fertility by pretty much selective impact. 
or universal and selective impact there. So the social constraints they have here, economic deterrence and social controls. They've got three outlines, as you can see there, three tables that go down. Social controls, economic determinants, de deterrence and social constraints. So under social constraints, which is the first thing we are going to go into, they state that one of the social constraints to be implemented is the restructure of the family unit. Now we've talked about this before, okay, we've talked about this a lot, but let's have a look at a couple of them. The number one thing they want to institute, and this is relation to population control, is compulsory education of children. So they can control the education of the children. Not so they can do it for some kind of, uh, you know, benevolent reasons to make sure every child can read, that's a great thing, or every child can do mathematics. No, this is coming from the idea of population control. The next one, this is from 1969, encourage increased homosexuality. Now, I'm saying that because if you look at today's media, and remember we're 2019 now, so this is literally 40 years later, okay, 40 years after this document, Pretty much almost exact, bar a few months here and there. 40 years later, and, uh, you know, everywhere you go, every TV program is now, it's, it's a big massive push towards the promotion of uh, pretty much gay, gay rights, gay, uh, gay being gay, uh, so on and so forth. Now, homosexuality was always there. You can look back through history. But now it seems like it is the cool thing for children to do. And you've seen a rise in this, which I've said reports on before with spikes and rises within the UK because children are prone to social influence. And now they're saying that there is a larger number of people that say they're gay. That's what's happened, okay? And the Brown University study showed that, which was removed from the Brown University website and regarding transgender individuals of which there's a huge increase now no matter what you think about that look at the inputs into the equation and see the result it means less people will probably be in intimate relationships have a because he's a family unit and have children because what gay couple couples need to have surrogate mothers in order to have children Okay, so you can see that just the promotion of the idea of all these things achieves the direct outcome of which they're saying, which is the restructuring of the family unit. Classical family units, of course, with the male and female having the 3.5 children, you know, the white picket fence or whatever, and, uh, you know, so on and so forth, is something that the Rockefeller Institute and this person is putting forward as something to adjust policy should be restructured in order for population control, population control. And like I've gone on to a, before, it's also about the destruction or the questioning or the destruction of the identity in regarding, uh, you know, uh, in regarding to sovereignty of countries. Educate for family and limitation. And also here, this is an unbelievable one on restructuring the family. What does it say there? And remember, this person is a famous individual. Writing for Scientific American. Writing ideas for policy changes in the United States. Fertility control agents in the water supply, they state. Look at that. Read that. First time you come across this document, first time I did a few years ago, or a number of years now, I was like, that can't be real. That's not real. How is that even real? Well, I'd forgotten all about this document until it showed up again on Reddit Conspiracy. But there you go, I'm making the, the first time I'd read it in some time, looking at it here. I was like, oh, that's unbelievable. I made the same comment. So fertility control agents in the water supply right there in a mainstream document cited by Wikipedia and one of the most powerful people, one of the architects behind Planned Parenthood, per projecting there for fertility control agents in the water supply. Now, we're 40 years later. So it's not like you've got someone down at the, uh, the you know, down there pouring, dumping uh, barrels or something into the water supply. It's much more subtle than that. 
First of all, my perspective is, as large corporations are being used as shadow proxy mechanisms in order to pump endocrine disruptors and fertility agents into the water supply itself. But even at the governmental level, and that is heightened shadow government level, at the normal level, they don't even check for fertility agents in the water supply. Okay, they don't. They found that the water supply is filled full of contraceptive uh, pills, uh, you know, female uh, contraceptive uh, uh, medication in the water supply. They have found that. Now, here's the question. Does all that come from women? That is the question, because they say, ah, oh, it's just from women. Okay, women, uh, you know, uh, you know, they're taking the contraceptive pill. Obviously, when they go to the bathroom, it gets flushed into the sewage system and then retreated in the water supply, and it ends up in the rivers, lakes, or whatever. That is what they say. But here's the question. That is a type of psychological camouflage as well, which means... You could, in another location, be literally spraying it down from planes into the water supply. And what's anyone ever going to say? Well, I'm just using an example. Actually, chemtrails themselves use coal fire ash, which is a different substance if you look into that, which I've done videos about. I'm talking about something different. You could put it in the water supply, and now you've got a psychological camouflage. You can say, hey, it's just a female contraceptive pill, man. Well, is it really? Or does it come from some other arena? Okay? They're just using that. Now, they can blame women for that. When the actual fact is, they might be piping that stuff in directly. Look, and I used to have a steam distiller. It broke down, unfortunately. So now I'm on just a jug with a water filter. But I'm going to get my steam distiller again. Uh, because... It's the only way to be sure. It's like that line from Aliens. We have to nuke the planet from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. you got to go with a steam distillation system or a reverse osmosis filter. Of course, they're expensive. I, they're very expensive, actually. Uh, but you've got to try to get actual real water that's not full of chemicals. Right now, I am, uh, you know, I'm on the water jug, so I should be one to talk, right? But uh, that is an important measure because there's so many subversion mechanisms, uh, mechanisms and we know by the documents they're doing it, at least in my opinion, you might disagree with me, but there's tons of this stuff. This is one memo. We see the effects all over society with fertility rates dropping astronomically, you know, and all these other things. What's their next plan? I wonder what's happening to the insects because all the insects are dying now, as you've seen me do videos on. Now, here we have uh, this line here, encourage women to work. Now, here's the difference. I think, personally, obviously, got a number of sisters, that every woman should have the right to do whatever they want. I'm all about liberty. But there's an interesting thing the Rockefeller Institute did. They instituted to make women feel guilty, okay, for having two kids and not working. This is what they did. Because... Obviously, if a woman has two kids, she is uh, literally, that is a full-time job, okay? Now, sometimes a woman, and there's lots of women that are super hard working, will have two kids, go out and work anyway. But this kind of guilt initiative that's put on some women in order to do everything is kind of uh, what was instituted by the Rockefeller, well, Rockefeller Institute, was ordered to make women feel guilty for not being able to do everything in the world. This is after Rockefeller Institute put in measures, in my opinion, and all these people, in order to break up the family unit. Okay, break up the family unit, so now all the pressure's on mum. She has to work and raise the kids, uh, and so on and so forth. So that was something that was done. And when the Rockefeller, well, the major line is, is what was looked at is the fact that you had two sides of the family, you had two sexes. So usually one of the parents would be working and providing. Uh, you could have stay-at-home dads, but usually back in these days, the man would be working. But instead of having two units working together in a symbiotic relationship, okay, with one working, whatever one of them was working, one working and uh, one uh, taking care of the children, what they did is they wanted to tax both sides of the family. So one of the outcomes was this, if you have both parents working massive hours, no matter what parent it was, 
you'd be able to tax both sides of the family and there would be less time spent with the children and they could pump this into the children into compulsory education systems at which they could brainwash them in my opinion okay so there's a number of shockers really the main shocker here is fertility control agents in the water supply that really is a massive shocker and of course this is coming under restructuring the family so the next line as they said that they have to do is economic deterrence okay these are classic some of these were instituted some of them are shadow instituted so it looks like they're not instituted but they actually are for instance one thing that they talk about here and let's just uh, take a closer look at this now this goes on to a number of ones a number of these things on screen but one of the ones that was instituted in my opinion not just the everywhere in the west was the ability to buy a house you see because there's a, a specific benefit to them and their agenda into having people not able to own a house right now you see this massive move towards the tiny house movement and you all know i've got a house truck myself which is still being fixed here and there it's supposed to be on the road but i haven't had as much time but it will be the thing about this is what you have is you have the removal of the space required to have children uh you know the the ability to have children okay so if you have a house okay you've got a lot of bedrooms in your house and you can afford it it takes a couple of years to pay off your house in a good wage i'm thinking back to the 1950s 1950s new zealand you could buy a house in a couple of years so everyone would just own their house okay you could get married and have a couple of kids and you're a nice fence and all these types of things today probably it take 40 years to buy a house the house in new zealand on average maybe well in my experience hundreds of thousands of dollars okay it's about half a million dollars for a house now the thing about all these kinds of things is that it has two benefits and you can see it directly trend within western societies is the fact that less family units you know more expensive the housing less likely to have a cohesive family because they're always worrying about paying off the mortgage for infinity financial stress on a relationship is one of the main driving factors towards uh, relationship breakups it's a very careful strategy so you make sure that the price of housing is always too expensive for everybody to afford and you reduce the family unit and the ability to have a children one of the main takeaways from that is of course that uh you know these the the uh family unit itself means less stake in uh the political arena because you have less of a stake in society therefore you're less likely to care who your local politician is so you can see a drop off in uh interest in regarding voter turnout directly with the price of housing uh so uh those types of things here listen to this headline here chronic depression one of the main headlines there okay require women to work and provide few child care facilities so everyone is probably competing to get their children into child care facilities at some stage of course in a free market people start up more child care facilities but you can put so much red tape and legal on them that it makes it very extremely difficult difficult and so many taxations on them that it'll make it difficult to survive possibly i don't know a lot about that particular one myself but chronic depression being one of their headlines they love this stuff look at them fertility control agents in the water supply and here we go into some other ones here uh, etc now obviously you know you're in a new world this is uh, planned parenthood or one of the architects behind that you know you're in a world and i've done videos on it about you've gone from uh you know abortion being a topical debate to now uh, fourth term abortion being a topical debate fourth term abortion is infanticide that's literally aborting a baby after it's been born and is in uh, an incubator i can't even believe that we're at that kind of point where that's actually a debate what about the rights of the baby okay don't they have rights as a human being on this planet now they've been born but it's happened over time we've gotten to this point over generations carefully instituted machine with its parts being slowly implemented piecemeal until you have this massive machine that's all encompassing moving in one direction now you can go through a bit more of those not all of those seem to me to have been implemented but there are a number of them that obviously have 
uh, housing policies, discouragement of private home ownership right there, uh, so on and so forth. Obviously, I've gone on about the link of housing and related to family size and having a stake in society. Very interesting document, which I thought I'd talk, uh, talk about. I hope you enjoyed this particular video. Let's go into a couple of other things. These are just some headlines for reference purposes. Of course, you know that big tech is on the side of all of that. Okay, the censor, uh, uh, you know, pro-life videos. Well, they highlight pro-abortion videos. Obviously, I mean, it's obvious. I've done videos on it uh, numerous times. Of course, the sperm count continues to fall. Down and down it goes until we're all infertile. Gain chemicals in the water, fresh water fish, male fish exposed to chemicals in water becoming more feminine. Get yourself a water distiller. I should listen to my own advice because I had one, as I said. Well, I've had a number of them, but the last one just broke down. I don't even know why it broke down, actually. It's probably got to do with the fuse inside. Maybe I should take it apart and have a look. Maybe it's like a something inside, I'm not sure. Estimates of LGBT population rises to 4.5%, uh, so on and so forth. Half a century of fewer people marrying. What explains it? Psychology today. Everyone doesn't know what explains it. It's all a mystery. <laughs> of course it is. Okay, so on and so forth. Just like it's a mystery with Google. Why, do, why are they on the side of... Uh, why are they against pro-life videos? Think about that in philosophical terms for a moment. Google and big tech, forget about all the drama associated word, are against pro-life. Being pro-life, being pro for the baby to be able to have a life there, you know, in a fourth term abortion, okay? They are against that. And this is the world we live in now. Of course, they'll slowly change the psyche of people over time, so people will forget about forget about what they were used to argue about, and they've got more worries. And that's another key detail. You get people to complain about uh, le less likely to complain about anything that really matters by conflating all the minuscule things that they should care about in society until they're like in this uh, merry-go-round of minuscule things, okay? Complaining about, you know, arguing about what gender everybody is. What does that accomplish? What do any of these things accomplish? This has been a long-term subversion campaign by an elite few that uh, have been in charge a long time and for whatever reasons. What are the spaceships going to come down soon? The hybrids or something? Who really knows? Uh... At about this time, I'd probably believe anything if there's evidence for it. In the meantime, though, thank you all for your support on Subscribe Star, Steam It, uh, you know, uh, and Patron. Thank you all for your support. Hope you enjoyed this quick video. And I'm going to be obviously doing more of these every couple of days. I'll have a new one to go into an investigation of an old document. Pretty strange stuff. In the meantime, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all later.